Hello everyone, this is Dr. Dan from Access Analog, and today we're going to be going through one of the new features of our version 7 plugin. Version 7, the main change versus version 6, is that we've added cloud storage to all of our servers. So this includes Pama, Magic Garden Infrasonic, and our main Access Analog server. The cloud storage has enhanced some of the existing features and also created new features like Internet Optimize that will be discussed in a different video. This video is going to cover the enhanced offline. Now I know there are some folks that like to go things quickly and understand at a high level how they work and then go play. So we're going to make one pass where we go through it quickly. The second pass will go through it in detail. You can see right now I've got my master bus transformer, my absolute favorite new piece of gear. And I've got it on a track, I've got it set the way, exactly the way I want, and I'm ready to do my bounce. So I'm going to stop. A playback, you'll notice there's two new panels versus version 6 of our plugin, the source and the bounce. I'm going to go over to the source panel, and this gives you the ability to upload files and control what files are used for bounce with our cloud storage. In this case, I want to bounce this particular file, so I'm going to do a drag and a drop. I'm going to upload it. You'll see it's getting uploaded, buffered, calculated, and then you see the waveform. Another thing to note is this audio source equals server files. We automatically set that for you versus the default setting, which is DAW, and I'll explain that on the second pass. So now I'm ready to do an offline bounce. At this point, I go to the bounce panel. I pick the format, the output I want, and since the track is in stereo, I'm going to bounce it in stereo. My sample rate, uh, the extended file tail, I'll explain in a different video. I'm ready to bounce. So I press bounce, you'll notice you're going to get a progress bar here, you're going to get the percent here, you're going to see the audio is getting played through here, get my bounce status, and as soon as the bounce is complete, then all I need to do is press this button to download it, say yes, I want to download, yep, I'll overwrite the existing one, and the file gets downloaded to my desktop. It's just that easy. It goes from setting up your gear here, Go to your server file, upload your file, go to your bounce, press bounce, and you're good to go. Now, we really think this is going to help folks that have internet challenges because sometimes in the past, when a file was being downloaded from a bounce, the connection would drop and all the work was lost. That won't be the case as now the file, when it's bounced, it goes to the cloud storage and can be downloaded at any point in the future. I can grab it again if I want. I can download as many times as I need. So that's the basic overview. Let's go through it now in a little bit more detail, and let's start with the source panel. In the source panel, I'm going to clear this. The first thing to understand is how to get files into the cloud. And you saw that I did the drag and the drop, but you'll notice this time when I do a drag and a drop for the second time, it's going to get slightly different. It's loading, and boom, it's already loaded. It's much faster because in the case where we already have the file, in our cloud storage, we read it from disk. We don't upload it again. So for people who have slow internet and large files to process, this is going to be huge improvement because you only have to upload it once. So that's the first way to get the files into the cloud. The second way is a traditional three dots. You get the directory. You can pick something that you like. I'll just do overheads, upload that. So the other way to do it then is via a directory select. Now, once you've got files in the cloud, I want to show you this button, which is the circle arrow with watch hands in the middle, and that represents the recent files already on the server. So if I press that button, you're going to notice the two files that I previously uploaded are listed, and in this case, it will give you up to 10 of the most recent files. I'm going to reload this one. So again, it comes from the directory on the cloud storage. You get it loaded, and you're ready to do your bounce. So want to make sure people understand that you can drag and drop, you can select a file from a directory for upload, and then once you have your files uploaded in the cloud storage, you can select it via the recent. All right, now let's explain these over here. This cloud storage is the ability to give you access to files that are on the server, but you have to tell our plugin where you want audio to be played from. So if I'm going to do a bounce, it needs to be the server files. However, 
I can set this to DAW, and what that means is when I press play, I'm not playing from the audio in the cloud. I'm playing from the audio that's coming from my DAW. You can see over here. So now I'm, I'm playing audio, I'm stopping the audio, I'm playing the audio. It's coming from the DAW, meaning that the audio samples are streamed from the DAW to our plugin. If I select this to server files, now all the audio is going to be coming from the server and nothing is going to come from the DAW. So that's an important distinction to make. Whenever you do a bounce, just make sure that this says server files. Whenever you do an upload, let me just clear it and I'll show you. If you do the upload, it, we're automatically going to set that to server files, assuming that you want to do a bounce. Now the upload from DAW, that's another video that I'll go through. It's a feature. Import from Bounces is another feature that I'll cover in a different video. But this line here is very important, and let me explain what it means. If I select cache source files on server and I leave it checked, that means that we will leave your files on our server for up to 30 days. So that way when you do the drag and the drop, it comes from our cloud if it's a file that's already been uploaded. Now we realize that there are some people that don't want their audio stored anywhere. They want to keep it only on their computer and that's fine. So if you uncheck this box and then you disconnect, all the files that are in the source directory on our cloud will be erased. So just know that's a very powerful button because if you uncheck it and disconnect, everything gets deleted. So the next time you come to use the plugin and you want to upload a file, you're going to have to upload it fresh. It won't come from the cloud storage if it was previously uploaded. Hopefully that makes sense. This sync server file playback to DAW, that's a whole other video that I'm going to go through. So that covers the basics uh, on this panel. Now let me go to this panel. This one's pretty self-explanatory in that you bounce a format, a file, and you're going to tell us what format. Now, I, even if you loaded up a stereo track on the source, you can st over here, you can still select mono if you want. Uh, this is the output sample rate. I think that's self-explanatory. This is a special flag that tells us how long if someone wants to extend the file, meaning adding zeros to their file here. And this is mostly used for cases where you have reverb. So let's say that I had a piece of gear here that was the reverb, the Bricasti, and I've got a file here, and I've got the Bricasti delay set to two seconds, and I want to capture the entire tail of that delay after my audio stops processing. Then what I would do is set this to two seconds to do my bounce, and then we'll capture the tail of the reverb delay. Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Bounce, I think, is self-explanatory. And this button here, keep bounced files on the server, is the complement of this button here, cached source files on server. If you uncheck this box and you press disconnect, then all the files are going to be deleted from your bounced file directory. Just make sure you know that. The other way to do it, if you want to do it by hand, is you can press this button and say, yes, I want to delete that file. So that's the basics of how we do our new enhanced offline. It's very simple and straightforward. If there's anything that doesn't make sense, hit us up on the support chat. We try to be available on support chat as much as we can, but we really think this feature is going to help folks who have internet challenges, who have experienced times when on the upload or download, your connection was dropped and therefore you had to start all over.